Hello and welcome to this video in which I address the question of whether it is always better to use structural equation modeling compared to simpler statistical techniques. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present statistical tutorials on Tuesdays, usually issues related to the M plus software and on Thursdays related to more general issues in multivariate statistics. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. In this video here, I want to address a frequently asked question about structural equation modeling. Frequently, people who are new to structural equation modeling and factor analysis get the sense that this is something that they always have to do, that it is always better to run <coughs> a structural equation model compared to a simpler statistical analysis, such as, for example, regression analysis or path analysis. And so in this video here, I want to address this issue and give you some pros and cons. And my view on this topic, is it really the case that you always have to have an SEM or can you or should you not sometimes go with something that is a little bit simpler? So <clears throat> in order to address this issue, uh, I think it's useful to first of all think about why are we using structural equation modeling? What are the main arguments that are in favor of structural equation modeling? Why do we think that it is or that it may be a more powerful technique than more um, traditional methods such as linear regression analysis or path analysis. Remember that in structural equation modeling, one feature is that we can use latent variables, we can use multiple indicators to measure latent variables, meaning multiple scales or multiple items. And so what is the purpose of that? Why are we doing that? And why does it have an advantage to use latent variables as opposed to using simply observed scores or observed variables? And so latent variables have the advantage that we can, that they are free of error. So with a measurement model with multiple indicators, when we measure latent variables, we can correct for measurement error, we can separate true score variance or common factor variance from uh, measurement error variance and item specific variance and that is seen as an advantage because it allows us to look at relationships between variables controlling for measurement error. Measurement error has a um, has an attenuating effect on correlation coefficients. We know that from classical test theory, uh, there's a correction for attenuation formula specifically developed to correct correlation coefficients for the attenuating effects of measurement error, <clears throat> where you use the reliabilities or estimates of the reliabilities of the variables to correct a correlation coefficient for measurement error and estimate the true score correlation. And so that kind of correction is built into a confirmatory factor analysis and also is built into structural equation modeling when it comes to estimating the path coefficient. So in theory, this is a clear advantage because if we don't uh, include a correction for measurement error, like for example, if we do a correlation analysis with um, observed scores, then those correlations are likely to be underestimates unless the reliabilities of our scores are close to one, which in the social sciences is not, not always the case. In my field, psychology, we often deal with reliabilities that are more in the range of 0 0.7, 0 0.8 rather than being close to 1.0. And so there's considerable, there's a considerable amount of error variance in the observed scores. And so then we might end up with a correlation matrix where we have underestimates of the true correlations. And so then a better way to approach this is by using confirmatory factor analysis where we estimate latent correlations that are uh, corrected for measurement error that are disattenuated, so to say, where we um, can then look at the true score correlations. And the same applies to latent path analysis, meaning a structural equation model with regression paths in which we can also then, uh, or in which we hopefully get path coefficients that are corrected for error and therefore more precise. So this is, so 
to say um, probably the main argument why structural equation modeling is useful besides also um, it's a very flexible comprehensive technique that allows us to look at multiple dependent independent and mediator variables also moderator variables and um, complex relationships between variables can be modeled we get tests of model fit so that we can um, assess whether our theories match with the observed data that's also a powerful advantage of structural equation models so there are definitely important advantages of this framework that uh, it has over simple correlation analysis simple regression analysis and path analysis with only observed variables that being said so to say there are also some disadvantages so um, also, it is a large sample technique. Structural equation modeling is not something that you could typically do with 50 cases or that you should do with 50 cases, whereas a correlation analysis with 50 or 60 cases may be fine or a regression analysis. And so this is one issue. And then also not every SEM is a good SEM. So if you have indicators or measurements that are not good, that are not unidimensional, where you have where you don't have a clear factor structure and where you can't get a model to fit because your indicators maybe measure all kinds of things and it's not clear what all they measure, then you might end up with a big mess and it's um, then not something that will help you. And if you get a model that doesn't fit, then the parameter estimates may be biased and what you get, so say, may be invalid. The results that you find may not be meaningful. So having good indicators, having good measurements is a prerequisite for meaningful results in an SEM and confirmatory factor analysis and um, model goodness of fit tests are one way to ensure that, um, that that's actually the case. Now, speaking of measures, one issue could be that maybe you don't have multiple indicators. So maybe you have only one item for each construct of interest. And then if you have only one item, then you still have possibilities to run structural equation models with latent variables. There are single indicator models where you can uh, fix the error variance to a known or assumed value and then still separate that error variance from the true score variance, but then it becomes more tricky and more complicated. And in that situation, you may choose to simply go with an observed variable type of analysis. Also, it could be the case that your audience that you're targeting, the journal maybe in which you want to publish your findings, just isn't willing to put up with a complex statistical analysis, such as an SEM with many parameters and a complex structure, and that individuals who read your article would prefer to have something that's simpler, that they're more familiar with, that they find uh, or that they feel like they are more able to evaluate your results, such as a simple correlation or regression analysis. And then I would say there's not in principle um, something wrong with it, unless you have variables that are very unreliable, where you have lots of measurement error, then you have to assume that there uh, is a lot of potential bias in your estimates of those correlations and or regression coefficients, maybe also that you have lower statistical power because of the presence of measurement error. So it's always a good idea to know about the psychometric properties of the variables in your analysis and single items are not always totally unreliable. So there can be, uh, there's, there are examples of single item measures that are clearly reliable and invalid. And so then um, I don't say, that, I wouldn't say that there's anything totally wrong with just simply using simple uh, single item measures in a simpler type of analysis. Sometimes it's also just simply a good idea, keep it simple rather than making it complicated and running into issues that um, don't really pay off at the end. So in some situations, it just is a better idea to go with something that you know maybe better, that you feel more comfortable with, that um, is a proven methodology. I mean, SEM is also a proven methodology, but a lot of things can go wrong with structural equation modeling. There can be convergence problems, there can be improper solutions, there can be model misfit. People often find model misfit 
to be difficult to address or difficult to find out what is wrong and um, this is something that you don't have to deal with when you um, use correlation or regression analysis. Now this is not to say that that um, you shouldn't use SEM of course if you can if uh, you have the pre if you're meeting the prerequisites for a meaningful structural equation analysis then that is definitely something that um, I think you should do but in, in summary, so to say, I would say SEM is not in 100% of the cases the method of choice. There are clearly situations when simpler analyses could be used, when um, you could use just simply regression analysis, correlation analysis, or path analysis, and you don't have to feel bad when you don't always estimate a structural equation model. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. And also, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section if you like, and I'll see you next time.